Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today's video is a little bit different. Have you ever had a piece that just needs a little bit of attention? It doesn't need a full refinishing, but it needs to be spruced up a bit. This is one of those pieces. This has been sitting in my garage now for a couple of weeks. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with it. I considered refinishing it all, but to be honest, it's in pretty good shape. It's not an antique. It's made mostly of cherry. The main trouble spots on this piece are the trim all the way around on both sides. The finish is flaking off and failing, so those are going to need to be refinished. The tricky part is going to be trying to blend those into the rest of the piece, which has this quite lovely patina. Color matching to an existing finish is not that easy, but I'm going to give it my best shot here. The top is in remarkably good condition, so this is going to be a partial restoration and partial <laughs> sprucing up. Stay tuned. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Just before we get started with today's video, I wanted to let you know that for the month of April, any super chats received on the live chats during the video premieres on Sundays, all of the proceeds are going to be donated to 10,000 Carats Rabbit Rescue, which is the rescue that all of my bunnies are from, the rescue we foster with, and the rescue I fundraise for. If you don't know what a super chat is, when you watch a premiere live on YouTube, there's a live chat window and there's normal chats. And then this here, this is a super chat. So you can donate any amount of money you want for the month of April. That would be videos on the 3rd, the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th. All super chats from those videos is going to be donated directly to the rescue. They're coming into one of the worst times of the year for them financially because of all the Easter babies that are purchased as pets and then discarded, unfortunately, not long after. So just my way of doing what I can. I know I have a lot of folks from the States and the UK that often message and ask how they can help out, but it's a little bit harder to, to transfer funds. So I thought this would be a good way to do that. So having a good look at this piece, I'm going to take out all of the drawers and inspect them, make sure everything is tight and secure. It's a pretty well-made drawer, but I was a little bit surprised to find a faux wood bottom. Everything else on this is pretty good materials for the most part, so I found it a little odd <laughs> that it wasn't a real wood bottom, but that's okay. This piece was made in Canada. I'm not sure exactly the age of it. And then this other sticker, this place probably either brought it in initially or sold it secondhand at some point. And here's a penny. We don't have pennies in circulation in Canada anymore, so <laughs> kind of a fun treat to find. The first thing I need to do is figure out what type of finish this is. I'm leaning toward a lacquer finish, but this little test will tell me. So I've got lacquer thinner and I also have methyl hydrate. And normally when you're conducting a test like this to find out what type of finish you're working with, you want to do it on an inconspicuous spot. This drawer has some wear from people's fingers constantly grabbing that knob. So I'm actually going to be refinishing this one single drawer as well. So this is where I'm going to do my test. So all I'm doing is adding a couple of drops of the lacquer thinner on one side and the methyl hydrate on the other side letting it sit for a few moments and then taking a q-tip and just sort of rubbing it around. You can see on the side with the methyl hydrate you get a little bit of color loss but it's not really eating down into the finish. But if you look here on the other side it's a massive loss of color immediately so what this tells me this is definitely a lacquer finish and I think a toned lacquer finish. So they wouldn't have stained this wood. They would have used a spray lacquer with some sort of color in it to get the, the finish that they wanted. This is good news for me because it means I don't have to try to sand down to bare wood to do my color correction. All I'm gonna be doing is using some more lacquer thinner and 4 aught steel wool to get rid of this old finish. Feel free to subscribe to this channel if you like this sort of content and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And here's that same drawer all cleaned up and everything is dry. So comparing it to this other drawer, you can see sort of that natural patina I was talking about where you've got dark areas where their spray finish had accumulated in the corners. You've got areas that are a little bit light from wear and tear of just being touched as the drawer gets pulled out and pushed in over the years. And I have to try to mimic that. 
So before I do anything else, I'm going to seal the wood here with a spray on vinyl sealer and basically this just allows me to do more of a glaze finishes over the top rather than staining the wood. If I stain this wood, it's never going to match the rest of the drawers. So by sealing it first, either with a finish like I put on here or a clear coat of shellac, what that does is allows you to use stain like a glaze and it just very lightly colors the wood. And you can do multiple layers, multiple colors to get that finish built up to where it matches the rest of the piece. I'm not great at this. There are some pros out there. You might want to check out Tom Johnson or Trina from John's Furniture Repair. She's also in Canada. These guys do this stuff way more often than I do. I'm still learning, but I am pretty good with colors. So I grabbed my general finishes gel stain in the color nutmeg, which is sort of a warm brown. And I just know from having used it so many times, the color it gives, and I thought it would be pretty close to matching the rest. So I'm using it as a glaze. I'm going to put it on, I'm going to wipe most of it off, I'm going to leave a little bit of it accumulated in the corners to kind of mimic the other drawers. Once this is fully dried, I'm going to use a spray-on toner to just tint the wood just that little bit more to get it as close as possible. I'm going to set that drawer aside and go ahead and start cleaning out the rest of the piece. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to be completely refinishing most of this piece, but I do need to give it a really good cleaning. So I'm using some of the Odie Safer Solvent and a 1500 grit Merca Merlon pad to thoroughly clean the outside of the piece. This is going to dissolve some of the built up spray polishes and waxes, to get rid of the dirt. The top I'm actually going to, once I get it fully clean, I'm going to give it another spray or two of lacquer just to really clean it up. There's a few surface scratches, so those will kind of help even those out a little bit. But everything else on the piece, once I get it clean, is going to be refreshed with a coat of wax. Don't be fooled or think that refreshing a piece is easier and faster than refinishing. Sometimes it takes just as long. This was actually a couple of hours just to get it all cleaned out and wiped down with the saver solvent. It's not quite the same thing as buying a piece on Marketplace and just <laughs> quickly wiping it and reselling it. There's, there's some work involved here when you do it like this, especially when doing spot repairs and color correction on top of that. So this is a spray toner from Mohawk. This color is perfect brown. When it comes to toner, lighter coats is always best. It's good to build up the color gradually. You don't want to just spray a super thick coat on there because it'll probably run and drip and not look very good. So obviously the one I just sprayed is still damp, but you can see here that when it dries, it's going to be really, really close to the rest of the drawers. So I'm really happy with how this color match came out. Once the toner was dry, I gave it a coat of lacquer. Looking good. So now it is time to tackle the bases. I need to get rid of that flaking finish, so I'm just gonna hand sand here. This is, I believe, a 180 grit. And I'm just gonna do the bottom sections here where the damage is the worst. I think I need to change my gloves. I'm just using this little scraper here to get rid of some paint splatter. There are a few spots on the piece where it was just random blobs of white paint. So I'm going to do the same thing here I did on the drawer. I'm going to seal it. This is the vinyl sealer. Once that's dry, I'm going to go on with my nutmeg gel stain. 
brush it all on, wipe it off, and then I'm going to tone it with the Perfect Brown Mohawk Toner. One thing I'm always saying in my videos is that continued learning is important. I picked up these two books yesterday when I was at Lee Valley, and this first book, even though I don't build furniture, having you read through this is going to be really informative when it comes to looking at pieces that need repairs and parts uh, remanufactured. And this book is an incredibly in-depth look at refinishing as a whole. It covers so many different topics. Even though I've been doing this work quite a while, I still have so much to learn and I'm constantly changing my techniques as I learn better ways of doing things and watching YouTube videos and reading books like this I find really helps. So, so I'm really looking forward to diving into these books. I don't know when I'm going to do it, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. As the top was drying, I moved on to waxing the rest of the piece. I'm using the Odie's Oil Wax, which is a super hard wax, and this just adds a little bit of extra sheen and protection for the piece, which I apply with a Merca Merlon pad, let it sort of set up for a little bit, and then buff it all off. Once the lacquer was dry on the top, I did a wax treatment there as well. And the time has come now to deal with the hardware. So this set of buffing and polishing wheels for like a Dremel tool I received from Amy from my Amazon wishlist, so thank you so much for this. These are perfect for buffing up tarnished hardware. This particular tool is great because it's got a long flexible hose and you can adjust the speed, so I like to use a lower speed when I'm doing this. Now here's something I didn't realize about the hardware. They're not all solid brass, they're actually plated, which I did know, but little side pieces that the handles fit into. The plating on those was extremely thin, like I couldn't even polish them by hand without taking off the finish, so unfortunately I ended up having to spray paint these. But if you look at the spray painted ones versus this one which I have in my hand which is the polished one. The color is very very similar. I was really hoping to be able to just polish these up and have them natural but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Especially when you're dealing with plating that's damaged or very very thin. Even though this glass top has some little scratches and gouges here and there, I'm still going to clean it up and put it back with the piece. The only reason that top was in such good condition is because of this glass, so I'm absolutely <laughs> sending this desk off with the top. Having a quick look back at what we started with, this is one of those pieces that from afar looks good, but once you get up close to it, you can really start to see some of the damages and inconsistencies in the finish. Partial restoration is something I do fairly often, especially on vintage and antique pieces. I just want to say thank you for watching and following along with me while I do this. Let's have a look at this piece now because she's a beauty. <laughs> 